need because the protocol is quite detailed. But let me start by welcoming our guest of honor. Uh, our guest of honor, the Honourable Deputy Speaker of Parliament. We know you've had a long day. Parliament just adjourned about 20 minutes back, but we appreciate that you made the time to be here. We thank you. We have very many important people in this house. I just want to, you to know that we appreciate all of you. We have our development partners, ambassadors here, uh, heads of drug missions. We have the chairman, Ruperedia Group of Companies, is one of our chief guests today. We have captains of industry, our tourism private sector, Uganda Tourism Association, Auto, Tugata, all of you, I see you, I recognize you, I thank you for making the time to be here. I want to thank everyone who has been with us. We've been here since morning, since 10 o'clock, and some of you have been here with us all day. So my job is just to welcome you. The minister will make the remarks. Uh, we will have a lot of exciting activities ahead of us. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say we thank you for being with us. Today is World Tourism Day. We are in a celebratory mood. Let's enjoy our time together. Thank you very much. Um, part in our tourism space. Uh, as you know, tourism is very wide. It's not just travel, it's also, you know, uh, when you go places, you delve into their dishes and you get to understand the people through their recipes and uh, staple foods. For on that note, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite our dear State Minister, uh, Honorable Mati Mukara. Uh, yes. Honorable Mati Mukara, by the new State Minister, Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, is going to uh, take the honor to award this uh, special people. And the very first, the very first in this category, ladies and gentlemen, either you have experienced in person, or you have had, or you've seen pictures, put your heads together and welcome with us Chikungwe, Mr. Chikungwe Umar, the brain behind Shaka Zulu, the restaurant. Hey, if you guys do not know what a balanced diet is, visit that restaurant. It is more than a balanced diet. Our dear Honorable Minister, this is the man. Quick 
research session. Uh, we are now this 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 uh, uh, this is a representative of a group uh, that does it. They, they, they don't have the phobia for heights. Put your hands together and welcome with me, Mountains Club of Uganda, represented by David Masika. marketers of uh, tour destinations are people like these because the influencers they share the pictures and we plan to try and it later happens I guess so uh, thank you Asante Sana Mr. David Masika and next is Oketa Kenneth from Vida Kazi to us Yes, 
And uh, it was very, very close session. I want us to put our hands together and welcome the ambassador uh, of Hungary to Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, he is in our midst. Yes, His Excellency, Janos Terry. <laughs> I pray I pronounce that right. Put your hands together and give him a very warm welcome. The Embassy of Hungary has given Uganda a very fast. Uh, usually we try in the UK and uh, use our own money. They say no, not anymore. So the Embassy of Hungary, ladies and gentlemen, donated to the Ministry of Tourism, Wild Life and Antiquities, digital billboards. <laughs> yeah, you know what that means. Uh, because then we are able to exhibit uh, a lot of information uh, without having just uh, one spot with one piece of information for a long time. Asante Sana. Thank you very much, Ambassador, His Excellency Janus. You can take your seats. Um, uh, uh, because, because we really want to get through this really quickly, we are going to uh, recognize and give thanks and show gratitude to some of our industry captains in the house tonight. And uh, I'll start. Um, not a lighter note, but uh, on a very Uganda note. Uh, put your hands together and welcome with us our ambassador, our tourism ambassador, Mr. Eddie Kenzo. <laughs> but Mr. Nisha, I think Mr. Nisha, you have better get a perfect Eddie Kenzo jam as he walks to the podium. This man is the... <laughs> Mr. DJ, what was out here? as many innovators in this space as possible. 
It was introduced to Instagram in 2016. Around this time, the number of Ugandans that had embraced the social media platform was small. The quick thinking Namanya started IG Uganda, which is an Instagram account showcasing pictures of Ugandans enjoying life in the country. Brian noticed the trend among the pictures that were uploaded. The most viewed page got uh, uh, the most viewed pictures that showed Uganda natural beauty and tourist attractions. In 2018, Brian launched Tuwayo, which has become a marketplace where different stakeholders in the tourism industry meet and do business. The Tuwayo mobile application currently has over 10 thousand users and the farm hosts of the capability of 1,000 bed spaces even though they do not own a single hotel. So without Brian, there are hotels that would go a night without what? Without customers. Ladies and gentlemen, we celebrate Brian uh, of uh, the Tuwayo firm. Uh, our dear guest of honor. Um, we're trying to make this as fast as possible, but uh, there's a gentleman that we cannot go without recognizing whether he is around or not, whether he stepped out or he's still here. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the, you know you got a silver bar? You know the silver bar? Mr. Joshua Chipsege. Mr. Joshua Chemsege, if you are still here, we would love to have this glorious moment with you on stage. But uh, if you are not, uh, we shall have a sadly to move on. So, in the absence, um, that's what Joshua Chemsege, in his absence, maybe, maybe, maybe we allow our guests of honor to hold this accolade for the whole world to see and inspire others out there. To know, you know, um, to put in your own individual efforts and to light the flag. This man calls himself the silver bar, and indeed he is the silver bar. Joshua Chimtege, this probably is going to be the last of this category, uh, which shall uh, allow her to, you know, uh, take it back in self custody. We shall get it to Chimtege. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take the honor to invite our State Minister of uh, the Ministry of Tourism, uh, Wildlife and uh, Antiquities to give us uh, a few remarks and also invite our guest of honor to deliver his keynote speech. Please. The private sector uh, all of us that uh, support the sector are not so much because most of you actually are from within the... We at least meet often and we discuss what is within the sector. So I want to thank you. The heads of the agencies, the boards represented here today, uh, our new queens that just won recently, Miss Tourism, those that have won uh, awards today, I know others will get next year as well and want to you know, make this keep uh, happening and not only turn end today. So I want to thank you all and I want to thank you for supporting the sector and for coming to be part of this event today. Uh, we had a number of activities, uh, Chief Guest, from morning, this closes everything, but I want to thank you. I know you were just in Parliament, actually at some time I got to and I thought maybe you would not make it, but we are glad to have you and thank you for honouring us and honouring uh, the World Tourism Day today. I don't want to go into the history of what happened to, to the tourism sector during COVID, because indeed we were hit so badly. I, I, I always say, uh, you know, want to stay away from the bad story. But the good news is we are recovering well. And uh, at least by mid this year, out of the 1.5 million visitors that were coming to Uganda, at least by mid, by July we had gone up to 532,000. So I believe that by the end of the year, probably we could go back to the 1 billion. It may not reach the 1.6, uh, 1.5, but at least above a billion. So we are covering steadily. 
some money is coming in, everyone in the sector, at least is, uh, the two operators are working, the hotels are working, and we hope things get better. It's only unfortunate that now, recently, there was a new scare of Ebola, but my prayer is, because I know this country has uh, uh, managed this uh, outbreak before, and hopefully it doesn't affect uh, the sector going forward. But also the most interesting thing now, I think we can all agree, is that the Ugandans, the domestic tourism component, has grown. And like never before, we've not seen the numbers we are seeing today. So I to thank all the two operators, all the players in the sector, that have at least tried to create or give something different to the Ugandans. And I can assure you, because if you look at the figures, even within the box, it's now 50-50. Foreigners looking at uh, Queen Elizabeth, I think around July, of the 14,000 visitors that visited, half were East Africans, and of course, almost 80% Ugandans. So the other half were the foreigners. So, so I think this is interesting, and I want to encourage Ugandans, please travel. And I want to thank uh, the speaker, because I've seen you travel. And interestingly, when he travels, he tweets about uh, this beautiful country. So I want to thank you, and I just want to encourage you, let's all be ambassadors of the beautiful world of Africa. Uh, with those few remarks, uh, but just to say as well, to invite you, uh, right honorable speaker, uh, maybe one of these days, to come you visit at least, because I know, you, you know, sometimes I can just tell you, maybe four beautiful things that we have in this country that need some more support, so we can put them at a standard and they become competitive, uh, that, that are only unique to Uganda. So probably we should go with you, visit the source of the Nile, and see how you support us. Uh, probably in general we shall be doing the Renzori, I don't know if you have the time to maybe come and train us up that uh, mountain, but of course, the Mount Renzori. Yeah, and you're very fit, I know you'd, uh, you'd even beat me at it. The most powerful uh, falls actually in the world on the Nile. I should also visit and see how we develop this infrastructure because it's only unique to Uganda. But I want to thank you for the support to the sector. Recently, the, museum, uh, the museum's bill. And actually, you carry it like it was yours. You, if it wasn't for you, you would have had challenges. But I want to thank you for the support and thank you for, for supporting the sector as well. And, and also to probably request of you that we still need the support. Compared to the other countries in the region, I mean, we are nowhere close. We sell almost the same thing across uh, the East African community. It's unfortunate that we don't get much. Of, of the 1.6 billion, and, and sometimes I say, probably people think, we, we, when we say that uh, the tourism sector brought in 1.6 billion shillings, that usually we are lying. I think that's what. And we are saying that probably by 2026, 20, it could even go to $3 billion. But, but just to tell you how we calculate, because of, of the 1.52 visitors that visited this country, we average that usually they spend around eight days within the country. And each of them, let's say the lowest, will be around $125 per day. So out of that should come to around 1.6 million. But, but we need to advertise this country and this appear anywhere internationally so that we talk about the future of this country. With those few remarks, sir, uh, I want to invite you to come and give your remarks. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry for coming late. It's usually not my hand. But I had other assignments of yours. So today I had to do week from 2 p.m. to 10 minutes past 8, running the house. Because I had important business to ensure that indeed we sought. Um, the Minister of State for Tourism, Governor Martin Ibarra, and my sister, the PS Ministry of tourism, the diplomatic corps. I mean, we are celebrating, so I can say fellow celebrants. It's an evening. It's not a night of promise I know how that is um, I congratulate the entire tourism fraternity on this occasion to commemorate the World Tourism Day. The theme of this year's commemoration, which is rethinking tourism, is quite reflective of the future given the recovery costs that the sector is currently going through. 
sites being an exciting industry given its leisure perspective, tourism has an immense impact on social economic on social cultural and economic transformation. Travel for leisure purposes has evolved from an experience reserved for the very few into something we now call everyone's business. I'm always added on WhatsApp groups that I travel, uh, that I go for what kind of events, you know, some are religious, others are a bit criminal. <laughs> others are beyond me, others are beyond privilege, others are okay of a person of my age. But, you know, these things of status and all that, I no longer have my peace. <laughs> Even the it's, it's some peace he doesn't have. Yeah? Yes. So uh, I miss out a lot. I love fun. But uh, I'm now missing out a lot. I'm so limited. So I'm a minister. That's why you're not seeing me joining you. Because, uh, you know, in their groups, they are always accompanied by very beautiful ladies. And, uh, and someone might take a picture and cry. Now you kind of love negative news. And that's a new catch. Now I would be in trouble with my mother and my own So I'm always very cautious when I'm a minister. But you are going to plan a good one. And I'll join you. Especially because on my bucket list, I'm planning to climb Mount Sabino. I've admired it from Xero's side. I quite look at it and say, one day I will do it. Then from Sabino, I was planning to upgrade, of course, to Renzori. But I think I can make it for Renzori. So let's plan for Germany. Yeah. I'm not going back. I look after myself very well. I can plan chairman, we can have a deal. Yes, um, colleagues. I want to thank you and congratulate you for running a sector that easily adapted to the challenges of COVID. I know most of you who are seriously affected, but for those who managed to understand the effects of COVID and the global economic challenges, I want to congratulate you. Business is all about that. And we should look at it as an opportunity because it has shown you that relying on foreigners to run your business is risky. We have very many Ugandans. You have very many Ugandans who want to profit, but the costs, especially for those who are having lodges and all that, are very prohibitive. Are very prohibitive. You know, Ugandans say, that hotel is so beautiful. $800 per night, even some lie when it's not even true, but the costs are very prohibitive. So I want to encourage you, especially those in national banks, to design packages for Ugandans that are affordable for Ugandans. <laughs> so that you also enjoy those beautiful lodges you're talking about. You know, chairman usually designs packages for us, eh? for what we want see, who can afford, especially during Christmas and all that. Uh, I met Mr. Mayuri in London, and this is what we are discussing. I said, keep encouraging, because he's been designing the same. But we have lodges that would rather go empty than allowing us to go in. They are good, but you don't even allow us to go and take a picture in those lodges. And we stray a little. And then we put on TikTok. Eh? Okay? And, and then, you know, some of our friends who could afford can come. So we want, Honorable Minister, you work with these sector players. There shouldn't be any road in Uganda that is unaffordable for Uganda. There are for Uganda so that whenever I'm traveling, I'm able to say, we have a very beautiful road in Uganda. I market you. But if it is for an exclusive class, it becomes difficult uh, for us to be able to market you. So packages for Ugandans, and this will make business sustainable. If our borders are closed for six months, 
for a year, fully, fully across. How are you going to sustain your business? You might even invite us to sleep in for free and we refuse. <laughs> yeah, because when we want it, <laughs> you never allow it. So uh, from a business perspective, I would encourage you that lodge owners for the big lodges, please. Uh, design packages for the galleries allow us in uh, so that we can be able to know the beauty of our country. Then, of course, on the same, I want to encourage, uh, we are going to pursue it. You saw I raised the issue of visas. It, it's disheartening. If we can focus on intra Africa tours alone, because we don't know the beauty of Africa. You know, some of the people are excited to just go on a plane. I want one day to go on a plane, and I visit an African country. So intra-Africa tourism to me is very, very important, and we have to get the initiative as government. We push an agenda for visa-free travel across Africa. I go to, you find if I apply for a visa to America, the minimum, they give me two years. But an African country gives you four days to visit Africa. <laughs> we have some of the countries. Four days to visit Africa. I said, no, you, you might stay in our country. Really? An African? And then you want us to pursue the African agenda? So, on the diplomatic level and on the government level, we are going to pursue the issue of intra-Africa travel through visa free travel for Africans. I know the African Union had already passed that resolution uh, a few, I think it was a few months ago. I was with the former president of Ghana and we shared on it. I was telling the ambassador of Hungary, I was with his president. And uh, in, uh, uh, in the in the in Fatima Portugal, where we had gone to pray, you can see religious tourism. Religious tourism is very very important. So I find it easier to get a visa to go to Portugal, to go to Hungary, despite these people abusing us in their parliament, than going to an African country. And it's annoying. It's a real really annoying. And me, I've not shied away. I've told African presidents I've met, I've told African leaders, and this is an issue for which I'm working on something to share with the existence of the president. The issue of visa-free travel in Africa. If, you, if our biggest uh, travel pattern, the patterns have been in East Africa, okay? What about if we made it visa-free to travel South Africa and South Africans coming here? And we reciprocate. That is what is going to help us as a continent. And uh, we are going to push for that so that you as a sector, you can. We can even have, uh, like how we have the East African tourist visa, tourist visa. We can have an Africa tourist visa so that once a tourist comes to Africa, is encouraged to easily move around the whole of Africa, which would be very, very easy. Uh, so, as a legislature, we are going to continue supporting you, both from the aspect of funding and from the aspect of legislation. I have already told the minister if there are any other gaps in legislation, reach out to us. We want to sort out gaps affecting the tourism sector in Uganda. If there is any, any hindering block affecting the development of tourism, that is of a legislative nature, bring it to our attention. And we are going to support you. Make sure we are all those things. Recently, we, we passed, indeed, like the minister said, the museums and uh, monuments bill. Now, we were facing a lot of resistance from some people. Saying, you cannot gazette my land. And you say it's a cultural heritage. And those same people are moving to museums, to cultural heritage sites in Europe, and they are buying and paying a lot of money. But you don't want to protect what you have here. And in Uganda. So, if a family of the late, Dr. Ampuro, director of Mbote, 
huko imbare na huko the same now said they are and say ah people will bring this uh, i'm told the wasabis who here to shift bodies at night so that spirits don't follow you and you say we are going to do it at night we slaughter a cow we slaughter a white hen so that the hotel uh, his excellence of hotel's ghost does not follow me and then i say run i go i buy what orders in case it happens we say no you don't have that right we say it's in family land it's for their family but it's a national heritage it's a national heritage if we pass the law that is very clear the minister can declare and gazette any side if the minister is going to acquire then we shall follow article 26 of the constitution where you must be compensated but once it's gazette you must use it in a manner that is commensurate with the regulations which the minister will have appreciated that's how we shall protect our national heritage I was in Iran recently and they showed me they, they, are, they, they are doing a new line uh, for their train. And they told me they spent, they spent around 15 years seeking approval from the local authorities. Why? There were some national heritage, you know, sites underground. So you needed to do that. Our embassy. No, our ambassador's residence in Ottawa. For over 10 years, we couldn't get approval of renovating it. Why? The first prime minister of Canada stayed in that house. So they have said, even when you are renovating it, even if it belongs to the government of Uganda, you must renovate it in a manner that it will remain looking the way it was looking when it came here. So that you don't change it. And then a few things, for example, and then they don't know rigidity. No, we are rigid on small things. I recently met guys who, who own vintage cars. And they are saying, allow us to retain our number plates, UVW, something, something, so that it's vintage. And we are saying, no, you must get a new number plate. Now, it's no longer vintage. It's no longer vintage. And you find someone is rigid on that. Saying you can't change it. We say, no, no, you're going to change it. We can't run a country that way. We have to be flexible, we have to move with the times, but we must also protect our, our heritage. We shall give more uh, support uh, to government, especially on funding for security. That's why you see in Parliament, any budget to do with security, we never question. Because if you think our security is expensive, try Somalia. Yes. Yes. Try it. If you think security is expensive, try it. We allow you to be a country that is on, the, on God's mercy, that prays to God every day, and then you think if you survive. If you're succeeding in security, to ensure we have a secure country. The moment we have a secure country, people will find it easier. I know some many people from neighboring countries when they want to enjoy in the evening, they come to Uganda. Because people tell you in Uganda, it's where you can be walking on the streets at 3 a.m. and you're okay. You're secure. So uh, security, we are going to ensure that we continue supporting you as so much. And infrastructure, the issue of infrastructure. The tourism roads, which the president has uh, uh, has already uh, worked out a mechanism, but we are going to also ensure that indeed I've already asked the minister of water to ensure that we if we give you water. Some of areas like Rhodesia, where there are mountain areas. If in an area, if you go, when I went for Gora tracking in Nkuri Gosai. Now, you see the money that comes out of Ukraine. <laughs> you can't even drive there, you can't. You, you can't make a road to Ukraine. And yet, just money for one year would even make that road much better. 
So we must invest in infrastructure. We must invest in infrastructure and we are going to support it. These are some of the things some of us are looking at and we are closely working with the relevant ministries. We don't want to dictate to the existing what to do, but we are monitoring closely and in processing the ministerial policy statements, we shall ensure that we track the money for the tourism sector uh, so that we can have value. Now, uh, finally, the issue of marketing Uganda as Ugandans. This is our country. Whether we want it or not, we are going to be buried here. So I want to urge Ugandans, wherever you are, market your Uganda. If you want to hate government here, but don't hate your country. Because you have no any other country. If you go around painting the picture of Uganda that is totally different, and yet for you come and you enjoy it, you know? It's a point of concern for some of us. You can say whatever you want to say about the government. Yes, say the government, but know the limit. Know you're the ambassador of Uganda wherever you are. If you make people get scared of Uganda, if you say when you're moving on the streets of Uganda, they will spread the gas on you, they will do ABCD. No, 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 that's not Uganda. Ensure wherever you are, you are an ambassador of our country. And that's the only way we shall promote tourism in Uganda. And that's where that's the only way. People like chairman, I know people who have been quoting the chairman to go and develop their countries. I know many. Some of them were sharing with me. I said, this dear man, why did you give him as Uganda? Man has a lot of money. Who would want him to come and invest in these other countries? And whenever I come, I give him feedback. So chairman, I want to thank you and your team of investors. The team of investors who have looked at Uganda as your number one destination for investment. We are going to try our level best to support you wherever we can. And please know that wherever you are, you have friends in some of us. Next year, we meet at the Renzoris. Thank you. Wow. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, our, our, our dear uh, guest of honor. Before you leave, this is a humble request, very humble request. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to hold you uh, longer than you wish, but uh, uh, we we are lucky to have one of the, they were absent, but now I've seen a gentleman there. One of the players is going to uh, next media services because the ministry thinks they are one media entity that has done what you have been talking about. Marketing Uganda to Ugandans and to non-Ugandans using all their platforms. And uh... yes, yes. <laughs> They have given me a kahama. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is what we are going to do. This, there's a gentleman. Uh, S Media Services has done the best at uh, Marketing Uganda. Uh, and uh, we are lucky to have Mr. Bismarck Amopede. This gentleman here has done the travel show for more than 10 years. And uh, we are glad that he managed to make it here. Bismarck, thank you for coming. Bismarck uh, is going to pick this plane on behalf of NBS. Uh, notably, you know, Next Media is very white. Uh, he's a travel journalist and he has promoted Uganda for over 10 years. And he's the founder of Ekula Tourism Awards. I'm very sure many of you know about uh, Watch out for Ekula Tourism Awards dated for November 25th here in the same place where we are, Sheraton Hotel. Uh, you want to give our guest of honor another big round of applause. Yes, I will feel the passion uh, in his voice. Did you? Did you? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we are glad that...